So to train a large language model and do any sort of uh, trading or sentiment analysis based on news, we're going to need to get a large historical news data set. And this is what I'm going to show you in this video. Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about how to create a data set with the last six years worth of Benzinga news using the Alpaca API. It's free because Alpaca has a partnership with Benzinga and it's really cool to use. Um, um, if you guys, uh, I'm sure a lot, many of you are, maybe most of you are familiar with Alpaca. Uh, Alpaca is like a brokerage that like does API only for trading. Uh, and what's cool about Alpaca is it's, um, it, like they say they have zero commissions. They have a lot of cool stuff. One of the reasons I didn't use it personally is because they didn't have options, but now they're releasing the options. But um, Alpaca is cool. I think especially if you guys are new and you, and you don't want to trade in a paper account anymore uh, and you want to uh, try algorithms and you want to do a small size like maybe two, contra two shares, uh, this would be a lot better than Interactive Brokers because let's say, give, me a, give you a crazy example. Let's say Mullen before the reverse stock split was under a dollar. So if you're trading Mullen, you're paying 20 cents for the share and then a dollar for the commission. Well, here with Alpaca, um, there's no commissions. At least I think there's no commissions. Maybe crypto has commissions, but regular stock trading has no commissions. So it's cool. It has a nice data API, that sort of thing. Data does cost if you want like full data, but they give you like a partial data for free. Uh, anyways, it's, it's a cool thing, but I don't want to get into too much detail because what we really care about is we want to um, use their news API. Um, so just one second, you will log in, you log in and you click traders. Um, let me, uh, let me do that on the side, uh, uh, for a second. So once you're logged in, um, you, uh, you, you have something like this, uh, and then you click paper or, uh, sorry, you, you get to something like this and, uh, you look at, you go to, um, accounts, uh, sorry, uh, this is always the tricky part. What do you do here? So you do maybe home. Okay, home, and uh, you, you, you go to home, sorry. And then for home, you do, oh, view API keys. This is a hard thing to find this. You click view API keys, you get an API key, and I think you get an API secret. Um, I think it's good practice not to share the keys, so I won't here. So let me just show you for a second. Um, once you get the API keys in secret, um, the best practice is to like open a command prompt and do like, set um, like alpaca API key equals whatever, and then set alpaca API secret equals whatever. Um, and then after you have to restart your Python process, so like you'd have to run Jupyter Notebook after, and then you'll have this as an environment variable. So you do like either set alpaca, like I said, alpaca key equals whatever, or, um, um, yeah, this is in Windows. In Linux, you do like export um, alpaca key equals whatever. Um, and then alpaca secret. Also, yeah, you can change like edit system or environment variables. You go to environment variables and you can do in system variables, you could uh, add, you do new and you can do like alpaca uh, API key and then alpaca API secret. You add a value, you save it. Um, that's another way to do it. Okay, so assuming we have the API keys out of the way, then we launch Jupyter Notebook. I already, I already did that, but like you have to do this after you add the API keys. This is fake data. Um, so the best practice, of course, is you do like os.getenv key, API key, API secret. So then you have this API endpoint, like a URL. Um, okay, sorry. You know, let me maybe briefly talk about like the actual API. So let's Google Alpaca News API. And so the News API is, um, uh, okay, so the News API has um, uh, like a uh, request, like you do um, uh, get request to this thing. Uh, you have these headers with your key and secret, and then you get a response. We'll show you how to do that in Python. You can also request multiple symbols, like here's Bitcoin and Bitcoin uh, and BTUS, CUSD. And then you get like things like uh, 
uh, ID, headline, author, created by, summary, and there's a thing called, uh, um, you can have the content also, um, and I'll show you guys how to get that. So let me just show you guys the basic uh, in Python, because like we're, we're, we're trying to do things in Python. Um, so uh, what um, you're going to do here is um, um, you're going to have to, um, okay, so this is the uh, URL, the API endpoint you go to. Um, you get data for six years, but we're going to go from end date backwards in time uh, to get to the um, er, uh, first things. So, but we need the format in the, uh, for end date string to be this format. Okay, so we have this end date string. Um, we, we do the format string to get it in this format. Uh, we have to set the parameters. So um, the parameters are, um, you have symbols, like let's say I'll do Tesla. Um, you can also have like a start date string if you wanna limit um, uh, the time. Limit is 50. If you do more than 50, it does not work from my experience. And this is the most important thing. Uh, let me just write it as a note. Use include content uh, true to get actual text. Otherwise, you don't have text. You just have a summary of the article. So now uh, you write your headers with your API credentials, like here. Headers with API credentials. So um, yeah, maybe I'll write it as like a step-by-step -step thing. I'll do like, um, I'll do uh, API endpoint uh, here. Uh, oops, sorry. You have this API endpoint, this is the URL. Uh, we have, uh, we have this um, uh, set end date time. Uh, in uh, this format, uh, in format, uh, and then uh, we're going to set the initial parameters. And the initial parameters you can have uh, you have the symbols, you have the end, you have the limit of number, and include content equals. Uh, let me write, uh, oh, sorry, I wrote it here. Uh, use include content equals true to get actual test. Let me write it twice. Uh, use include content uh, true to get the actual text. Um, and start would limit like the range of, of dates, but I never think, I don't think you should use start because if you want the whole data, you should just go backwards in time. So anyways, now you write the header with the API credentials. This is the API key in secret. So like this, and sorry, maybe I'm going too fast through this because it's kind of boring stuff, but this is the magic. Okay, so now you make the request and get the data. So like, let's make the request and get the data. So the request is going to be, um, uh, we're gonna use the request library, of course. So we do response equals request.get URL, header equals headers, and params equals params. So, um, uh, let's show you guys how it works. So uh, we, uh, after you do that, you do the response.json. So you do like data equals response.json. And how does the data look like? Well, it's uh, it's kind of a dictionary. It's like a JSON. So the keys are um, news and next page token. Next page token is actually very important because next page token, basically what this means is like, okay, so we're going backwards in time yeah, we can use the like end date. We can update the end date every time to get like the new thing, uh, the, 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 where we left off by going backwards in time. Or we can use this thing called next page token. And I'll show you how to use that in a second. But other than that, you have this um, data um, news. And data news, if you do, um, you go to like length of uh, data news. Uh, you have the 50, and each thing has uh, a variety of things. It has like, um, uh, well, let me show you guys a trick. You can actually do pd data frame. Oh, sorry. Import pandas as pd. You can do pd data frame, and you can view it like, uh, uh, like the, the thing like this. If you have a list, 
uh, in the list is a list of uh, dictionary. You can do this. So now you have the author, the content, created at, headline. Uh, Kathy Wood is our only hope for our Tesla Bulls. Uh, ID, look at the important things. The important things is the content is the actual content. The, uh, it, it, um, let me call it, you know, let me call this DF. Okay. So the content is the actual content. Um, and the, um, uh, there's a summary, which could be important. And the, there's the headline is important. Of course, the uh, created ad is important. And you have to make sure there's no leakage and it's not updated in time and that sort of thing if you want to do ML. But uh, anyways, um, let's, uh, let's go with this example for a second. Um, let's just show you guys uh, maybe, um, let, let, maybe I'll show you. Um, uh, you know what, let, let, I'll show you guys later. Okay, so, so for now, this is what you want. You can look at the content, by the way. Uh, if you want the content, you have, um, um, you can do something like um, uh, uh, for uh, uh, content in DF dot uh, content uh, dot head. 10 dot to list um, you can do something like uh, uh, you know let me let me make this a new thing uh, let's let me say visualize visualize content so you can do something like for content in df dot content you can do uh, um, uh, this from ipython dot display import html and then you can do something like um, display HTML um, content. Um, I probably made a mistake. Uh, yeah, see, you, you get the content here. It's kind of cool. Um, I did the first time. Look at, you even get like Twitter stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so this is one thing. Um, you can also have multiple symbols, like um, basically um, for multiple symbols, make it a list. So uh, we can do something like, um, oops, we can do a Tesla and let's do their friend Rivian like this. Uh, let me make, make a note, I'll make it like, uh, i.e. Uh, uh, symbols uh, Tesla Rivian params. Um, and then you, you can rerun the same thing. You can do uh, like this. And let's and, and then this should give you the same data type thing with uh, Rivian now and Tesla. Um, and oh, and symbols, uh, uh, there's also an argument, sorry, if you go back here, there's an argument called uh, symbols, and it tells you like which symbols are involved here. So that's very useful. Anyways, so um, let's uh, now show you how to get, um, um, let's see how to get the entire six years worth of data. Okay, so the idea is we're going to go backwards in time, right? Um, and each time, remember, we had this data, um, we had this data dot, if you do data dot keys, you had this next page token. So the next page token is like where you left off, so to speak. You can also use end date, but like um, the next week's token is, um, is, uh, is more proper, I would say. So let's start. Um, how are we going to start? We are going to do um, now six years worth of data. So we do basically what we did up there, all the steps. Um, but now what we're going to do is we are going to keep track of the last page token and we're going to keep iterating it backwards in time. Next page token, sorry, uh, to know where we left off. So basically, uh, similar to last time, we have the endpoint, the end date, 
end date string, uh, fetch data. Um, we have uh, these headers with API credentials. Same as last time, basically. And then we're gonna go backwards in time. Um, and when we go backwards in time, every time we're gonna call this uh, fetch data, which is basically what we did above. And this fetch data is what we did above. Uh, we get the data, um, we extend the list, we keep it in a big list, we keep extending each time. And then we get this next page token and uh, we use that for the next thing. So here you see we have an argument, next page token, this page token is next page token, so it knows where to leave off. And you keep going backwards in time and then eventually you're gonna get what you want. So let's run it. Um, Oh, sorry, um, uh, I don't know why I, I did it like this. Um, so now see, I'm going backwards in time and um, I'm getting the data and then and getting six years worth of data for Tesla. Um, and then uh, the last step is I'll show you guys how to save this, um, doing that uh, data frame trick. Um, so the goal of this is honestly to just uh, get the data set so like we can do like cool sentiment analysis stuff and uh, large language models and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, if you're liking this video, please, if you like enjoyed this video of learning something, please like and subscribe. Uh, helps give me some confidence. Um, anyways, keep, uh, keep this going. Um, and once this thing is done, we are going to have this, uh, we're gonna have this uh, data set so let's, uh, we use symbol equals Tesla. I guess I should always, I should make it more generic, but um, I'm gonna do uh, pd.dataframe of data, and then I'm gonna save it uh, to CSV. No, let me make it more generic already. So I'm gonna make symbols equals, I'll make this like symbol. And yeah, you can make a symbol list, remember last time, to have multiple symbols. But let's just do it like this. Um, I guess you don't have to say it twice. Um, that would lead to errors. So uh, yeah, I'm actually taking a lot of data. So um, um, okay, and then I'm saving it to CSV using this thing. Um, and uh, uh, six years worth of data. But like, there's so much data on Tesla, it's crazy. It's like, it, it like takes forever. <laughs> Sorry for this uh, thing. I could have used Wish as an example or something. You know what, let's, uh, let's actually uh, uh, spare you guys time. I'll interrupt it which is kind of stupid. I went this far and I interrupted it, but I'll do symbol equals wish. Wish is the crappy stock uh, that only people like me uh, bought once. Um, so now wish, you see it, it has way less news and it's jumping. And wish also IPO'd in like 2021, I think. So it's gonna have way less data. So like, look, wish is done, it only has 626 items. And then I do save.csv. Um, so this data frame will be like wish news.csv and then I can like, um, uh, I could maybe I'll write save results to CSV file and then I can do um, load results from CSV. I can do uh, like df equals pd.readcsv uh, with this thing. And then we have our CSV that we can do our analysis. Uh, remember we have the, like, we have the headline, we have all that good stuff. Um, so I, we have the author, the content, the headline, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you liked it. Um, and see you in the next video. Uh, thank you.